During the 1920s, the economy was roaring and the government was prosperous. On October 24, 1929, the stock market crashed, marking the period of time known as the Great Depression. The Great Depression was an economic recession in North America, Europe, and other industrialized areas. The Great Depression lasted from about 1929 to 1939. When the Great Depression hit its peak in 1933, the unemployment rate rose from 3% to 25%. During this time, many families were left without food and had no way to provide for their families. Most stock investors lost all their money when the stock market crashed. People went from wealthy to desperate and poor. When the Great Depression hit, President Hoover took substantial steps to ease the economic crisis, but little was accomplished. In New York, Governor Roosevelt reacted slowly, hoping the economy would turn around. When it did not, Roosevelt said, there is a duty on the part of government to do something about this. He supported lower taxes for farmers and urged the state to develop public power utilities. As the depression deepened, Roosevelt got the New York State Legislature to pass a public works program for the unemployed and to grant relief to the needy. All of these actions established Roosevelt's credentials as a liberal reformer. Roosevelt won re-election in 1930. As the Great Depression worsened in the early 1930s, Republican prospects for the 1932 presidential election withered. The Democrats, on the other hand, looked to the rising star of their party, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Before FDR's presidency, he had some preparation before he became president. FDR had already initiated work relief and construction programs in 1929 through 1932, when he was governor of the New York State. These were the basis of the Federal New Deal. One key point of his presidency was that when FDR was in the Oval Office, he had no fear of others and wasn't afraid of being judged. What helped FDR during his presidency was that he was already in a political position and brought what he was trying to do in New York into the Oval Office. FDR also had some background with environmental conservation and social programs related to creating government jobs when he stepped into office as president. He had been the governor of New York prior to running for president and created some similar programs while in that office. The Depression was in its fourth year when he took office and politicians had plenty of time beforehand to prepare their political platforms. FDR knew that the nation was in trouble and needed to provide hope for their futures immediately. It was clear that he was prepared to hit the ground running during the first 100 days of his presidency. Once it became clear that FDR was ready to take action and to help his government, he ran for president and won with 57% popular vote. Once he was in the Oval Office, his leadership skills became apparent. During his first 100 days of presidency, he was the most productive and used his time to prove his right to be the president. During the first 100 days, he passed many of the important programs, which were between 1933 and 1938 and a few that came later. The New Deal included both laws passed by Congress as well as presidential executive orders during the first term of FDR. The goal of the New Deal was to provide jobs for Americans and to give people job opportunities to work in building public spaces across the country. Some of the programs passed were the Federal Security Act, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the Civilian Conservation Corp, the National Industrial Recovery Act, the Public Works Administration, the Federal Emergency Relief Act, the Social Security Act, the National Recovery Act, 
the Works Programs Administration Act, and many others. It was a public investment in people and the nation's places, from libraries and schools to seawalls and sidewalks. His programs provided jobs and ideas that were uplifting to the nation, especially to the people who were weary of the financial situation and struggling to put food on the table. Roosevelt showed how the federal government could rescue people from the extreme and inevitable depredations of unregulated market capitalism. FDR and all of the artists, construction workers, teachers, naturalists, and men and women from many countries who helped the New Deal programs leave behind a better country. The New Deal was effective in the recovery of the United States in many ways. Expert economics believe that the impending World War II was what finally pulled the United States out of the Depression, not the New Deal relief programs. Still, a few programs such as the Social Security Act, a retirement pension, and the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which protects our banks for up to $25,000, emerged from the New Deal and are still in effect today. Most New Deal programs ended, however, by or around the war. Government aid and certain relief programs, which we see today, are certainly rooted in the New Deal concepts. Still, conservatives tend to dislike social programs, and liberals encourage them so that there is no consensus on whether they were useful to reform. In a way, FDR's legacy was the hope he provided to the nation during one of its darkest moments, and the unfailing confidence he provided the United States was pulled into a global war. Most people had great faith in him as well as in his abilities. He was handicapped from polio and had physical issues, but he did not let them hold him back. Instead, he worked harder and pursued on maintaining a positive outlook and approach. His legacy is related to his strong leadership, optimism, and hope during hard times. Another legacy was that young men between their late teens and early 20s were housed in military-style dorms and performed forestry and public works projects. In North Carolina, they helped build parks in the Blue Ridge Parkway, as well as many other projects. These attractions are still enjoyed today. The Blue Ridge Parkway is a true national treasure. The boys earned some money, but most was sent back home to their families. The young men were also provided with a meal that they would not have received back at home. Between the meals and the labor, the young men had opportunities to thrive. The WPA employed 8.5 million different jobless Americans between 1935 and 1943. In Ken Burns' documentary, The Dust Bowl, a woman who grew up during the Depression said, With my family, we would have starved to death because we had no other way to make any money. The New Deal for us, the WPA in particular, was just a lifesaver. Most of our neighbors felt that way. The New Deal ushered in important financial reforms as seen in the Securities and Exchange Commission to police fraud, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation to protect Americans from bank losses, and Glass-Steagall legislation to discourage overly risky bank behavior. FDR was an exceptional leader and his New Deal created a legacy that is still seen today.